In this uh, course, we've included some project work. And the idea of the project work is to ask the participants to solve a problem which they face in their own work related to making public finance management reforms effective. So we've put together groups of three or four, and we've asked them to identify a specific problem, and we've said that it's got to be a problem that is on the one hand important, but on the other hand solvable, or, or at least potentially solvable by their own efforts. So they're going to present on what the problem is, a strategy to solve it, a, a broad set of actions, and then a more detailed plan of action, step by step, identifying a calendar and people responsible. And we've also asked them to identify the risks. For some groups, it's a little bit challenging because you, you're putting them on the spot. You're asking them, you know, okay, what have you learned? How are you going to use it? And in a sense, that's deliberate. We want to put them on the spot so that they really learn something. I'm confident we can get three out of four. If we get four out of four, I'll be pleased as punch, and I think it'll be a, a real big success for us. So, so we'll see how it goes. So we've been thinking in Nicaragua, and the problems we want to address, uh, and uh, that's what we basically want to say with this presentation. Uh, and we started by diagnosis on what we think is a key feature that we need to address in order to have improvements in the budget cycle. So what we think that the diagnosis was, was basically is that there's a large amount of programs in the budget. So that uh, means there's a lot of indicators and financial data, and for the very few people working on budget director, it's basically unmanageable. So we need to focus. Okay, so at the one side, we have too many programs with too many indicators, and they're all treated equally in terms of the budget cycle. So they're formulated with the same rules, they're monitored with the same rules. Um, well, we don't have a relation so far, but they're all managed with the same criteria. So um, there's no way that the military and expenditure program reflects the priorities at the national level throughout the programs and the budget. And that, we think, is a major issue uh, to um, increase performance. So at the very end, what we want to, uh, it's through monitoring and through policy development and planning, we have to have an influence in the budget, so then what comes in the budget is properly managed in a prioritized way. In one year, we need to deliver prompt results and, and prompt outputs, okay? We know that in the Ministry of Finance, there's a strong resistance to large methodological and theoretical discussions. That's the bottom line. Whenever you raise, uh, words like results or outcomes or outputs, there's a big discussion, so we need to avoid large theoretical uh, discussions. And then the Ministry of Finance is quite a small ministry, there's a lot of uh, resor human resources constraints, so we have to address it in a very pragmatic way. So we, we are proposing a very pragmatic approach uh, to what we want to do. The risks we uh, foresee that we need to address uh, are several and quite important. First of all, the technical assistance has been heavily personalized, so it's not easy to change the, the assistance. Uh, it's a very hierarchical government, it's very difficult to build trust, trust has been built, but we need to uh, assess uh, how we, uh, we, we manage this continuity with the government without compromising the trust they have built with us. So it's heavily personalized, which is quite an issue. And then one of the key outputs of the process so far has been a very close relationship between the Minister of Finance and the Presidency. In the historical context, this has not always been like this. We have managed to bring them to the, together, but again, we have a sense that if some external conditions uh, change, we might see a separation of these two entities, which will uh, affect deeply the outputs and outcomes of the process we are trying to, to, to implement. And again, in 2016, the new IFMIS system that's been in the design phases for like already four years is going to be implemented, so the budget for 2016 will be already charged in this IFMIS. It's a testing phase, we don't really know how it's going to affect uh, institutions and the central government and how they're going to relate with the system, the problems that are going to arise. So we need to monitor closely whatever incidents come um, out of the implementation of the IFMIS. I, I 
would really like you to explain if the the criteria for prioritization, which is the National Development Plan, is it a plan that is has consensus around built with civil society, with other parties, it is something that is backed by the population. And my second question is how do you how will you decide how who will decide and how it will will it be decided to reallocate the budget? Uh, from the other programs to this, uh, to this uh, strategic program. Okay, planning is quite a recent trend in the government. It's only when the Sandinistas government came to power, planning has started. So far, they had a set of uh, like priority <coughs> indicators which have not been really consensed with civil society. In fact, uh, are not uh, of great quality. We have the sense that by introducing these reforms and, and, and focusing on strategic programs eventually will have an impact on the way uh, priorities are set and are decided. But so far, the answer is no. The plan is not concerned with the assembly or the civil society, and the quality of the planning is yet to be improved. Uh, the second question was how are we going to address uh, and reallocate on fiscal spaces well, we think that through um, a properly designed medium-term expanded framework and with the commitment of all central level um, directors at the National Technical Committee, there is a good chance, uh, chance that discussions will eventually end up on how to reallocate uh, in, in the basis of information existing on performance at that program level, how to reallocate funds on the medium-term expanded framework. Although there is the plan, the overall development plan, presumably uh, there are certain high-level elements of that plan that may change from time to time, particularly with electoral cycles that could change in parliamentary composition or whatever. I didn't get a sense in your presentation whether or not, okay, you prioritization of programs versus others that are of less priority that you are going to create a permanent um, uh, continuous review structure. And I mean, a structure through which whenever a review is required, everything must go through. Yeah. Um, you know, is this going to be, how is this going to work? Is this going to be just a one-time deal and then people prioritize and then, you know, uh, what happens five years from now after the next election? I get the point. So the idea is, uh, with the process in which we are currently working is, try to identify the, um, the production chains in the programs. So in that way, we are able to allocate the priorities in the programs that are producing the indicators to measure them. In this way, if the priorities change, we're always going to be able to identify the programs which are producing them. So the program structure is relatively rigid. So even, uh, which it has uh, its, uh, its um, ups and downs, if we have a change uh, due to elections in the priorities, we, there is a system in place to articulate the planning with the budget. So we will be able to reallocate and, and identify which programs are producing the indicators uh, and the outputs and outcomes that are um, set as key priorities for the government. On the one hand, you're talking about prioritization in a political sense. Uh, on the other hand, you're talking about prioritization in terms of the overall roles of government and which bits are more important than others. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you could potentially say certain programs, let us say service delivery programs, have greater importance, need to be documented more fully, need to be monitored more carefully than, let us say, administrative programs. That would be one approach. But it doesn't seem to be quite what you're suggesting. What you're suggesting is a bit more, let's take six programs which are a political priority, and let's deal with these in an intense way. Well, and I wonder, I mean, linking to, to Edgar's question, I wonder if maybe you're focusing on a short-term objective when you could actually go for a long-term objective and have a more sustainable impact. In other words, by looking not just at six programs which are priority right now, mm. but reclassifying the programs and actually embracing the challenge of the methodological issue. Well, let's leave it at that. Thank you very much for the presentation. I think there's some issues still to look at. Thank you very much.